what we're defining as precision medicine here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital is taking everything that encompasses what that patient is about and applying it to understand that individual will use imaging data, will use clinical phenotyping, how, how you present, what your clinical features are, will use pharmacologic data, in other words, how you've responded personally to certain medications you've had to take. We'll use other laboratory data, chemistry data, hematologic data. Um, we'll use genomic data. We'll also use proteomic data, in other words, how proteins fold and function. We'll use metabolic data, how your body is acting, interacting, and producing energy. And we're going to put all of that information together. And we're going to build algorithms using things like machine learning, using natural language processing to comb the medical literature, to comb the clinical databases. And we're going to take all of that and build algorithms that are going to allow us to predict what's going to happen with groups of patients and then eventually drilling down to what should be done for individual patients. In collaboration with the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, we have uh, been making a number of efforts around cancer. And the goal there is to look at the cancer genome. Cancer is actually a genetic disease in almost all cases. And what we need to do is understand what the genetic changes are, the drivers of that cancer, as well as the things that uh, permit it to continue to grow are and how, they dis how they're distinguished from that patient's genome. We're building those algorithms that I was discussing to understand what the best way to care for patients are that have cancer. And um, a recent study just showed that it actually, by implementing this type of um, precision medicine, you can actually reduce the cost of care. You reduce the number of hospitalizations for patients, you reduce the number of times they go to the emergency room, and you significantly increase their lifespan and the quality of their life. In the pulmonary uh, domain, in uh, what we're doing for pulmonary medicine, has been focused on understanding these uh, very recalcitrant to treatment um, disorders in interstitial fibrosis and cystic lung disease. And again, by understanding the genome, but also the metabolome and their pulmonary function tests and, the, and integrating, in this case, the radiology, we're stratifying those and treatment, strat and treatment is going to be based on that type of stratification. And there's actually inroads being made currently to do that for several different of these disorders. A really interesting project we're doing right now is around looking at the microbiome. This is all the bacteria you have in your gut. But in the gut, we're actually developing algorithms right now here at the Brigham and Women's Hospital that will allow us to predict which patients are going to develop the mo one of the most common causes of hospital-acquired infections, C. difficile, which it causes a severe diarrhea. It actually causes a lot of morbidity and mortality in this country, about $1.4 billion a year. And we expect we're going to be able to not only predict which patients, but by using this type of precision medicine approach, we're going to actually be able to come up with a way to prevent it in all of those patients by giving them what that individual person needs based on understanding the population of patients we have. What I would like to see for precision medicine is it to basically become how we care for all patients in this hospital. That we develop the computational skill sets to take this massive amount of data we generate on all our patients here and use it in an effective way to anticipate and prevent disease. That's the ultimate goal provide better care 
better outcomes and at a lower cost. And that's where I think precision medicine is going to be able to really have an impact in healthcare.